Welcome to Norton Chemistry. Today we're going to be doing an enthalpy changes and calorimetry revision video. So what is the definition of enthalpy? We represent enthalpy as H, and it's the thermal energy stored in a system. Enthalpy change is a measured heat energy change, usually under standard conditions, which are 1 atmosphere for pressure, 298 Kelvin for temperature, which is 25 degrees Celsius, and 1 mol per dm cubed for concentration. And standard states are the state of a substance under standard conditions. So for example, the standard state of water is liquid. We have some definitions that we need to memorize. And the first definition is the enthalpy change of reaction. And this is the enthalpy change when a reaction takes place in the molar quantities shown in a chemical equation. So for example, if hydrogen reacts with chlorine, it forms two moles of HCl. And the enthalpy change of this reaction is measured when it occurs in the molar quantities shown in the chemical equation. Then enthalpy change of formation is the enthalpy change when one mole of a compound is formed from its constituent elements. So for example, hydrogen and half a mole of oxygen react to form one mole of H2O. Enthalpy change of combustion is the enthalpy change when one mole of a substance is completely burnt in oxygen. So for example, ethane reacts with three and a half moles of oxygen in combustion to form two moles of CO2 and three moles of H2O. And that is complete combustion because only carbon dioxide and water are formed. Enthalpy change of neutralization is the enthalpy change when an acid reacts with a base to form one mole of H2O. So for example, hydrochloric acid reacts with sodium hydroxide to form a salt, sodium chloride and water, and it has to be one mole of water formed. So exothermic and endothermic reactions. Exothermic reactions release energy to the surroundings. So the enthalpy change is negative. So you can see that in this combustion reaction, and it's important to note that combustion reactions are always exothermic because they release energy to the surroundings, the enthalpy decreases from the reactants, so CH4 and 2 moles of oxygen, to the products, so CO2 and 2 moles of H2O. So it, that gives a negative enthalpy change. And the activation energy is shown at the top. And I'll give you the definition for that in just a second. Endothermic reactions take energy in from the surroundings, so the enthalpy change is positive. So you can see that in this enthalpy profile diagram, the enthalpy increases from the reactants to the products as energy is taken in from the surroundings, and it has a very large activation energy because that activation energy is the enthalpy change and it goes above that as well. You can see I've also drawn EC, which is the enthalpy change with a catalyst. So you can see how a catalyst actually decreases activation energy. Activation energy is defined as the minimum energy required for a reaction to take place. And it's important to know that it's always positive. We can calculate the enthalpy change of a reaction by subtracting the sum of the bond enthalpy of the reactants by the sum of the bond enthalpy of the products. So we have a definition here, which is the average bond enthalpy. And this is the energy required to break one mole of specified bond type in a gaseous molecule. And this is an average of the different chemical environments the bond exists in, because the strength of bonds varies in different chemical environments. So for example, the strength of a carbon-carbon double bond might vary depending on the different bonds and different atoms around the carbon-carbon double bond. Note that bond breaking is endothermic because it requires energy from the surroundings and bond making is exothermic because it releases energy to the surroundings. So we've got a question. Feel free to go ahead and try to answer it and then you can watch for your answer. Hydrogen reacts with chlorine to form hydrogen chloride, HCl. So you can see in this reaction, hydrogen and chlorine, one mole of each, react to form two moles of HCl. And the enthalpy change is negative, it's minus 184 kilojoules per mole. Table 3.1 shows bond enthalpies. We've got the hydrogen bond, which is positive 436 kilojoules per mole. And we've got the chlorine bond, which is positive 243 kilojoules per mole. Calculate the bond enthalpy for the hydrogen chlorine bond from the information above. So let's write out our equation for calculating the enthalpy change. And that means that minus 184 is equal to positive 436 plus positive 243 minus two of the hydrogen chloride bond. So then if we add 436 to 243, that gives us 679. So then we can subtract 679 from minus 184 to remove the 679 on the right. That means that minus 2x is equal to minus 863. So if we divide that by two, that gives us minus 431.5, which is equal to minus x. So then bond enthalpy is positive 431.5. If you think about it, bond enthalpies must always be positive because they must be endothermic because they require energy from the surroundings. So they take in energy. Calorimetry is defined as measuring the amount of heat given off or taken in during a chemical reaction. And we use this formula, Q equals mc delta t to find the heat change in a reaction, which we can then go on to use to find the enthalpy change. And Q represents the heat change, which is measured in joules. 
M represents the mass of the substance in grams. C is the specific heat capacity, which is given on the data sheet and is 4.18. And delta T is the temperature change, which we can measure in either degrees Celsius or Kelvin. Okay, so I've got a question here. Magnesium reacts with aqueous silver nitrate as in equation 23.1. So magnesium reacts with two moles of silver nitrate to form silver and magnesium nitrate. A student carries out an experiment to determine the enthalpy change of this reaction. So define the enthalpy change of reaction and that is the enthalpy change when a reaction occurs in the molar quantities shown in the chemical equation. We can use that to help us answer this question. The student adds 25 centimeters cubed of 0.512 g mole per dm cubed of silver nitrate. So we can use that to find the moles of silver nitrate using the equation moles equals concentration times volume. The student measures the temperature of the solution. The student adds a small spatula measure of magnesium powder, stirs the mixture and records the maximum temperature. Temperature readings are an initial temperature of 19.5 degrees Celsius and a maximum temperature of 47.5 degrees Celsius. So we can use that to find the temperature change. And notice that the temperature increases. So this is going to be an exothermic reaction as energy is released to the surroundings. So we can immediately go to the answer line and put a minus sign because exothermic reactions always have a negative enthalpy change. So they're asking us to calculate the enthalpy change in kilojoules per mole for the reaction shown in equation 23.1. We need to give the answer to an appropriate number of significant figures. So if you have a look at the question, we can see that all the numbers are given to three significant figures. So that's the number we need to give it to in our answer. Assume that the density and specific heat capacity of the solution are the same as for water. So the density of water is 1 gram per centimetre cubed and the specific heat capacity is 4.18 and that all of the aqueous silver nitrate has reacted. So we can assume that silver nitrate is the limiting reactant. So we first want to use the equation Q equals mc delta t to find the energy released in the reaction. And we have 25 centimetres cubed of silver nitrate and that means that we have 25 grams of solution because... For each, for each centimetre cubed, it weighs one gram, as we're assuming it's the same mass as water. And the specific capacity of water is 4.18. And the temperature change is 47.5 minus 19.5, which is 28, which gives us an energy released of 2,926 joules. And then if we look at our answer line, we can see that the units are kilojoules per mole. So we need to convert to kilojoules. So we divide the joules value by 1,000, which gives us 2.926 kilojoules. And then we need to find the moles of silver nitrate because if you look at the answer line, the units are kilojoules per mole. So we need to divide the kilojoules by the amount of mole to get the enthalpy change value. So we use our equation N equals CV, and that is 25 divided by 1,000 converts to decimeters cubed, multiplied by 0.512 mole per dm cubed, which gives us 0.0128 mole. So then if we divide 2.926 kilojoules by 0.0128 mole, that gives us 228.5. But then notice in the equation that we have two moles of silver nitrate and we're calculating the enthalpy change of reaction. So we need to do it for the molar quantity shown in the chemical equation. So we multiply 228.5 by 2, which gives us 457.1, which the uh, three significant figures is minus 457 kilojoules per mole. So these questions can be quite difficult to identify what numbers you should use in your calculations. But if you read the questions carefully and decipher the information they've given you, they usually give you a clue at the end, like assuming the density and specific heat capacity as they have in this question, which can help you to make sure that you're using the right numbers in the right way in your calculations. Always check the molar quantities in the equation and make sure you define the type of enthalpy change that they've asked you to calculate. So for example, if it's enthalpy change of formation, it's going to be to form one mole of the product rather than say two mole. And that can really help you to get the right answer in your calculation. My main tip is to always check that to use the right sign. So if, that, if the temperature is increasing, it's always going to be negative because it's going to be exothermic. Whereas if the temperature is decreasing, it's going to be positive because it's going to be an endothermic reaction. Thanks for watching. Make sure to check out my qualitative analysis revision video, which should be in the bottom right hand corner now. You can also check out my website to purchase my notes and flashcards. The link will be in the description below.